the Best Docs Network helps you find some of the best doctors utilizing the latest procedures and practices in healthcare. Actual patients and the doctors themselves walk you through their stories that together help you make the best decision in your search for the right doctor. On today's episode, minimally invasive spine surgeon Dr. Douglas Wan talks about an innovative surgical technique he developed called Lumini Microinvasive Surgery. Cosmetic dentist Dr. Guy Lewis talks about some unique procedures in dentistry he has developed. Podiatrist Dr. Gabriel Meislos explains what neuromas are and how he can treat them. Bariatric surgeon Dr. Scott Stowers with My Bariatric Solutions helps his patient lose weight. Clinical psychologist Dr. Collins Hodges discusses how he is able to help families adapt to life changes. At the Lumen Health Spine Care, we developed the latest and the most innovative minimally invasive uh, surgical technique, and it is called Lumini Microinvasive Surgery. This is utilizing the most modern technology so that we can preserve all the normal tissues in your spine without creating any kind of damage to your back and without stripping the muscles. We make extremely small incision and go between the muscle fibers with an endoscope to perform the same procedure as if we would if we perform a traditional open back surgery. The big advantage is that the patients are not going to have significant amount of pain, they're not gonna have their muscles stripped off their spine, so therefore it minimizes the bleeding, scarring, pain, so that they could recover so much faster. Patient after undergoing uh, Lumini microinvasive surgery are discharged to home on the same day or the very next day, depending on the type of procedure they're having. And many of the patients can return back to work or their light duty activities pretty immediately after the surgery. So we evaluate the patient to see if they're candidate for Lumini microinvasive surgery by having a full consultation and evaluation and patient may undergo uh, imaging studies or pain mapping process by our interventional pain specialist so that we can clearly identify and accurately identify their pain generator and so that we can perform the, the least invasive procedure for the patient. We developed uh, Lumini microinvasive surgery because I've personally witnessed it from my father who had multiple open back surgery. He went through a significant amount of pain, developed chronic pain, and he had a fail back syndrome and lived 30 years of his life with significant amount of pain. And watching him suffer, I realized that we must do something better than what we're doing now to, to help all those patients with significant amount of back pain and chronic pain. So we used all the, the latest technology, worked closely with the, the engineers to, to develop the, the, the least invasive way to approach the spine. Get at least seven hours of sleep a night. It will help you live longer, lower your stress, sharpen your memory, and reduce cravings for fattening foods. I've been a patient of Dr. Lewis's for several years. My teeth were aging and also the color was not as, as good as we'd like it to be. Over time, as our teeth wear down, our nose and our chin get closer together because our teeth are what hold our nose and our chin apart. And as our teeth grind down, then this dimension of our face starts to collapse. Carol started noticing over time how her teeth looked more and more ground down. So she had worn through the enamel. She had dark spots in her lower teeth. Her upper teeth were real flat and short. He discussed with me to have the, the uh, crowns or veneers to give me a little bit of a lift, a smile lift. We call it a smile lift. It's kind of a play on a facelift because it actually makes your face look younger and longer. And so by going in and opening up their bite and making their teeth a little longer, then it just makes them look so much better. 
I uh, thought about it for quite a while because I wasn't really sure if I really wanted to, to do that. Uh, with my husband's prompting because he had had the procedure and it was wonderful and had a great experience, I decided that I would do it also. We did all of her teeth. We opened up her bite, which gave me room to make her teeth longer. Now she looks 15 years younger, whiter teeth, which is more youthful. It really made a huge difference on her and she is so happy. She's such a sweet lady anyway, but now she just kind of radiates this. I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. Friends and family, uh, they don't say, what did you have done to your teeth? They have a tendency more to say, your teeth look really nice. They can't quite figure out why they look better, which is really what I was hoping for. I just take care of my teeth like I always did and uh, I'm very, very happy. Find your doctor on bestdocsnetwork.com. First started having some pain in uh, my right foot after uh, an incident stepping out of a pool. And I thought it was just a simple bone bruise, but then I had some numbness. And so uh, I went to see um, some podiatrist and uh, initially they felt it was related to uh, my diabetes. When he came into my office, uh, he complained of you know, shooting pain in his toes. Um, so after doing an examination, an ultrasound exam, and he exhibited signs of a neuroma. A neuroma is essentially a nerve that is compressed by the sides of the metatarsal. So the nerve courses in between, and with a neuroma, it becomes inflamed. And after a while, it develops like a fiber sheath, and it's no longer just inflamed, it's enlarged. In terms of quality of life, I'm a big golfer, and you know, it was really made every day, and certainly uh, the enjoyment of playing golf, a lot uh, less enjoyable because because of the problem. So Mr. Weber uh, came in with the symptoms of a neuroma, and I believe uh, I treated him a couple times with uh, sclerosing injections. Uh, orthotics were given to him, and as well as instructions on, on stretching and taking an anti-inflammatory. And he just didn't get better. So at that point, uh, he elected to have surgery. Well, I think certainly in my case as a diabetic, and uh, given that the symptoms are so similar that this could happen to other people, I wasn't even aware of uh, what a neuroma was and being a diabetic, so I think just awareness is a key to understanding that um, numbness doesn't always mean diabetic neuropathy and it could be an actual injury to your foot and you should see a podiatrist. Uh, the procedure, it's very rewarding because patients like it and there's minimal pain postoperatively. If anything, there's some temporary numbness and then after a while, patients regain you know, sensation. My experience with Dr. Maslow's, you know, what I like about him is he is uh, very circumspect. So he doesn't assume anything. Let's go through all the steps. He's really interested in finding a solution. Very pleased with the care that uh, the doctor has given me. Sarah has a question for Dr. Jerome Nafee. Can compression hose cure or prevent varicose veins? Compression hose cannot cure or prevent varicose veins or spider veins from forming. They can only improve the symptoms while the hose are in place. The veins need to be treated directly and the hose cannot cure them. The hose can help temporarily improve the underlying symptoms of heavy, achy, tired legs. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. I struggled pretty much my whole life. I was always the big kid. And um, being that I am almost five foot nine tall, plus being heavy is, you know, weighs on your mind a lot. Even though I was still active, I still was a volume eater. And turned to that really for emotion more than anything. You just get to the point where you struggle with it. You do a diet here, it works. You gain it back plus 10. And that was a yo-yo effect of my life. When Shannon came to see us, if she was unable to lose and other methods, she tried multiple ways to do that. She also had several other health problems that she wanted to remedy. I wanted to make a lifestyle change, period. I was nervous, but I was ready. As scared as you might be, especially I had never had a major surgery, I was ready to go. 
and I felt very comfortable having met Dr. Stowers. I just felt like I was in the best of hands. Fitting into her lifestyle was a big part of the selection process for her. She didn't really need our more advanced surgeries or, or bypass, so the sleeve fit her lifestyle more. At three months, uh, most people lose about 20% of their body weight. So you can multiply 20% how much you weigh, and that's a pretty typical sleeve loss. That first six pounds was great, and then, you know, before you know it, it's up to 20. And you put on a pair of sweats that were your comfy sweats, and they don't fit. So you've got to tie them for the first time in your life, <laughs> and that's a great feeling. I've seen Shannon after two years now. I had to look at her old pictures and look at the new ones so I knew who she was. It's an amazing transformation. After having gastric sleeve procedure with Dr. Stowers, I've lost a total of 110 pounds. Looking in the mirror is um, when you've seen yourself for so big for so long and always been the pretty face. Um, it's almost surreal. I still sometimes see myself as that person. And then lifelong friends are like, I don't even recognize you on the street. People you went to school with don't know who you are. Knowing that the work you put into it yourself makes it very rewarding for you. Start sprinkling your oatmeal with some cinnamon. Studies show that this antioxidant-rich spice may reduce blood pressure and lower stress. My son was going through a transition of graduating from high school and entering a new chapter in his life. And so I think there was some anxiety on his part there was some anxiety on, on my part. It was coming out in negative ways and we had to identify what's going on and we needed somebody, an, an outside person to kind of help us mediate and facilitate through some of the feelings that, was, that were going on. Alma and Quattro were great. Um, I really enjoyed working with them. They were both very sweet, very bright, very interested in working in therapy. They initially came to see me because um, Quattro was moving along in his development. He was moving into young adulthood, moving off into college, and part of the conflict there was what is his move into college and his developmental move into young adulthood mean in terms of the renegotiation of boundaries between mom and son? and then the renegotiation of roles between mom and son. Dr. Hodges provided a great environment. He's a facilitator and a mediator, and that's what me and my mom needed in our relationship at the time. The main change that I saw was a better understanding from each of them as to what their new role was going to be. They both came to a better understanding as to who they were in it, not only as individuals, but as a close mother and child. Dr. Hodges gave us some really good guidance and encouragement, and through love and trust, uh, we were able to get through some tough spots and, and have some success. After seeing Dr. Hodges, it is just gave me and my mom a greater respect for each other as individuals, and just has taught us to learn and grow with each other. Dr. Hodges says, help me realize what progress is and how to obtain it. I didn't feel good about myself and I never wanted to go anywhere. Now my world has opened up. I occasionally go out with my girlfriends and we have a great time together. I was getting older and didn't really care about my weight, but my doctor said I needed to do something immediately. Now I'm spending time with my grandchildren and every moment seems special. My one reason was to live life again. My one reason was to simply live. So what's your one reason? Barker Bariatric Center. Log on or call today for your consultation. Coming up on the second half of today's show, interventional cardiologist Dr. Annie Varghese talks about cardiomyopathy. Family medicine doctor Richard Honecker addresses common health concerns in our medical minute. Houston Northwest Medical Center features its breast center. ENT surgeon Dr. C.T. Wynn talks about how he treats those with post-nasal drip and deviated septums. 
Vein specialist Dr. Peter Morgan talks about the benefits of using the Clarivane procedure to treat venous insufficiency. So John is a wonderful man. He is um, a father, uh, you know, he works every day. But unfortunately, he developed coronary disease at an early age, weakening of the heart because of that. Uh, so when he presented to me, the heart function was very poor. I was a jock, watching my diet, I loved exercise, I ran marathons, I was an NCAA certified basketball and football official, and the people that I work with, they knew me and knew that I was a fairly healthy person, so when they found out I had a heart attack, everyone was floored. Heart failure means the heart becomes weak, whether it's because of blockages uh, or other things, viral illnesses can cause heart failure, but for him it was blockage, not getting enough blood, so the muscle became weak over time. Before I started seeing her, they wanted me to run through a battery of tests, and when she saw the results of those tests, and I believe she was on maternity leave at the time. She came in and wanted to see me. I and mean, it was at that point she actually brought up that somewhere down the road I may actually need a heart transplant. Over the years, he's been evaluated by the transplant team. And he didn't need a transplant because we had taken great care of him. Uh, and uh, he's very thankful for that. And, and I'm thankful for medications and therapies that we were able to give him to keep him really controlled on heart failure. Dr. V is an amazing person. I owe quite a bit to that woman, and I feel very fortunate that she's my uh, cardiologist. He did um, have a device, a shock box put in, so that in the event of an arrhythmia, because the, the vessels are not working and the muscles are not working, so electrical abnormalities can occur, and people can have sudden death from heart failure. So we protected him by putting a shock box and uh, he has been able to work every day, but he takes his medicines and he's doing great. So that's a great testament to having great doctors paired together and great institutions to take care of patients. And we're very blessed here in Texas because of the Texas Heart Institute. Request an appointment on bestdocsnetwork.com. There are two types of arthritis, rheumatoid arthritis and osteoarthritis. Rheumatoid arthritis is the autoimmune, the immune system arthritis where your body is attacking itself with its own antibodies. That's the bad arthritis. There's effective treatment, but it's pretty tough treatment. Osteoarthritis is that wear and tear aging arthritis that a lot of us get. Now, how can you tell the difference? Well, there's several ways. First of all, in your hands. Rheumatoid arthritis tends to affect the knuckle joints, whereas osteoarthritis tends to affect the finger joints here and here, and sometimes at the base of the thumb. Also, osteoarthritis can occur in the lower back and in the neck. Um, morning stiffness can really help you tell the difference between rheumatoid and osteoarthritis. It's normal to be stiff in the morning for either one of those, but in rheumatoid arthritis, the stiffness lasts two to three hours. In osteoarthritis, it usually lasts only 15 to 30 minutes. Now, if you have mild or moderate uh, joint aching, just use anti-inflammatories, ice or heat, exercise, stay fit, get good sleep. But if, you're, if there's any question that it's rheumatoid arthritis, and that means prolonged morning stiffness and pain mainly in the knuckles and swelling too in that area, get it checked out and get your blood test done. Then you can get more effective treatment. Houston Northwest Medical Center's Breast Center. We focus on the patient and giving them the best quality care possible. The Breast Center here at Houston Northwest is a comprehensive breast center, meaning that not only can we do screening uh, mammograms, we can also do the diagnostic portion, ultrasounds, um, MRIs, and biopsies. I'm currently the medical director at Houston Northwest Medical Center. My primary role is interpreting screening and diagnostic mammograms, breast ultrasound and breast MRI for detection of breast cancer. Also to determine 
um, clinical issues. If a patient comes in with a palpable lump, we want to find out what it is. It doesn't mean it's going to be breast cancer. It may be a simple cyst. It may be a benign tumor, but that is part of the workup that I'm involved in. All of our nurses are certified nurse navigators here. They help the patient walk through the system, whether it's just for a screening mammogram or all the way through surgery. They help them navigate their care. At Houston Northwest Medical Center, we have four breast patient navigators. We are very fortunate to be able to do what we do. Very few hospitals in the area have the opportunity to have this many nurse navigators. And from the beginning, from screening, from going out into the community, it's all about deliverance of care and continuity of care. So if you just make sure that that care is not broken, then one passes a torch to the next person to make sure from the time that she got her biopsy, from the time that she got her diagnosis, that we actually use the library to give her all the information that she needs to arm herself before she goes to see the surgeon. At Houston Northwest Medical Center, we're very fortunate that we have a multidisciplinary breast cancer conference every two weeks, so twice a month. Every patient that is diagnosed with breast cancer at this hospital will be presented at a conference that is attended by radiologists, pathologists, breast surgeons, oncologists, radiation oncologists, and plastic surgeons, and the nurse navigators. This is an excellent way for the patient that has been recently diagnosed have a treatment plan mapped out for her by specialists that come to the breast conference. The Breast Center at Houston Northwest Medical Center is the only certified center of excellence in Houston, Texas. We have a monthly support group called Care, Share, and Be Aware where newly diagnosed patients can come and share their feelings. They can also bond with other breast cancer survivors to interact with them and learn from them. We always say no one chose this journey, but if you walk in the journey, you're not gonna walk it alone because we're gonna walk it with you. John has a question for Dr. Guy Lewis. Can you do a full smile makeover in a day? We can do a full smile makeover in a day if you want to do bonding. Bonding is a tooth colored filling material that we can use to change the color and the shape of your teeth and they can be done just like veneers, but it's made out of composite, which is a different material. It looks good and it can be very, very nice, but it's not as long lasting as doing it with porcelain. So if you want to do it with porcelain to get a more long-lasting, a better result, I think, in most cases, then you need to do two visits. And then you come in the first visit, we get the teeth ready, take impressions, then we have to send it to a lab, and they prepare the porcelain and send it back, and then we put that on at the second visit. Ask our doctors on bestdocsnetwork.com. Having a scheduled time for eating is a great way to keep your digestive system healthy. Try to sit down for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and a snack at the same time each day. My biggest problem was that I got several allergies. I couldn't breathe. I was snoring at night. I was sneezing a lot during the mornings when I woke up, and I was always having a nose discharge. Irma is a, a young professional who came to see me because she can't breathe through her nose. She's, she has this chronic problem that never went away. Uh, she consulted many doctors, and all she got was a you know, prescription of antibiotics, and that's it. Uh, since I was a child, I had that problem. I've been treated for, for allergies. I get better for specific periods of time, but I travel a lot. I travel internationally, so it's different pollens and different uh, trees or the landscape is totally different, so I, I couldn't find a solution. Doctors has treated Emma's problem with multiple course of antibiotics. 
I see this condition all the time. Patient has been treated with antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. The problem is that antibiotics may improve your symptoms, but it will mask the cause of the problem. He explains you everything, he shows you, you know, like with endoscopy, he was, I could see my nose inside, I saw where parts were infected, and he was telling me what what he can do for me and what would be the results. Decide upon a plan of treatment consisting of endoscopic sinus surgery assisted with uh, GPS-like technology to uh, target her disease sinus. He really uh, accommodate the surgery to my lifestyle. He already told me you are going to follow your allergy treatments with me and now everything is working perfectly for me. We are at the forefront of medical technology to improve our patient outcome. We want our patient to recuperate faster and feel better. I'm breathing, I feel healthier, I feel younger. I highly recommend the sinus surgery for everybody that has chronic infections. If you want to have decent hearing when you're in your 90s, you can exercise your ears. Simply turn on some music and practice singling out a single instrument and listening to it. This exercise can help to hear more details in everyday sounds. Clarivane is a new procedure. It's been out maybe for a year or so. It is a procedure that is associated with less pain, uh, both during the procedure and post-procedure. Patients that have venous insufficiency that don't have it corrected are going to get worse. The question is how fast will it get worse and how bad will it ultimately get? And that's dependent on the individual, how much of their problem is hereditary or genetic and how much is occupational. The typical presenting signs and symptoms, which include pain, swelling, restless legs, enlarged refluxing vessels, if you have the venous insufficiency corrected, the, the disease progress will, will completely stop. Um, and if it recurs, it can be easily treated without significant intervention. When you use a laser or radiofrequency ablation to close veins, it's an energy source that produces heat. And so you're essentially burning the veins using radiofrequency or laser. And in order to, to control that pain, you have to put a tumescent solution, which is a numbing medicine mixed with normal saline around the vein all the way up the leg. And so that requires several needle sticks, which is uncomfortable, and then that makes the leg kind of full, maybe a little tight, and there's some leakage of the fluid. And with the Clarivane, that tumescent's not needed because Clarivane basically has a mechanical agitator, like a skip rope, that spins inside the vein and traumatizes the lining of the vein and then we inject a sclerosant solution that augments the effect of the skip rope. When you use an energy source, there's always a risk that you could damage a structure that's adjacent to or near to the vein, such as a nerve or maybe even muscle, that sort of thing. And so with Clarivane, since there's no laser, there's no radio frequency, you don't, you're not using a heat source, and so it's, I think, significantly safer. All of the procedures are very safe statistically. The number of complications is very minimal, but I think there is some benefit with the Clarivane with respect to complications. Watch more videos on bestdocsnetwork.com. Didn't find the doctor you're looking for on today's episode? Head to our website, bestdocsnetwork.com. There you can search our video library by topic, specialty, and doctor. The Best Docs Network, helping you find the right doctor and bringing medical education to you.